Okay, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so I, I sent an announcement earlier, okay, to reiterate all the points I made yesterday plus a few additional points, okay? So uh, some of you ask for calculators, you can bring your own calculators, okay? So if you know how to use your calculator to do all your conversion, then it makes your life easier as well, all right? Uh, so you don't need to manually calculate and uh, convert some of those uh, number conversions, okay? So besides that, um, in terms of material coverage, like I said, it's up to tutorial 5, and which means it's lecture 12. Okay, but the lecture 12, which was recently covered, okay, uh, those that relate to the hardware design and truth table design will not be asked. Okay, so I will not, for example, ask you about something like this. I won't ask you to. I won't show you a logic gate and ask you to derive truth table or the other way around. So truth table, logic gates, those will not be asked, okay? But you are expected to know how the control signals work, okay, and how they play a part in enabling your processor to decode the various type of instructions, okay? So the actual truth table, the hardware logic that we saw, okay, um, Okay, things like this, hardware simplification or truth table reduction, all these things we will not ask you, okay, for the midterm. Okay, but what you need to know is you need to <coughs> definitely know how the various control signals play a part when I feed the processor with a particular type of instruction. Okay, so that is why this tutorial 5 is important because tutorial 5 is actually combining lecture 11 and lecture 12, right, the data part and the control. Okay? Okay, so let's start with our tutorial five uh, review here. Okay, so after after the class, I will upload the solution. That's no need to worry. Okay, so after the class, I'll upload these solutions for you to refer to. Okay, so just to recap quickly, what we did yesterday is we saw that. For your processor to work effectively, you have a lot of control signals. And all the control signals for the various multiplexers and the blocks can be obtained from the opcode. But for your ALU alone, you need to combine the opcode and the function field. Okay? So to do that, what we need to be able to, or the proposed design was using the function field and the opcode, we break it down to two steps, correct? The first step is the six-bit opcode will help us generate a two-bit ALU op, okay? And subsequently, the function field will be combined with this two-bit ALU op to give us the final ALU control bits, okay? So the final con ALU control bits only has four bits, but these four bits are obtained in two steps. Right, the first step is the 6-bit opcode translate to the 2-bit ALU, and then this and this combine together okay, to generate my final ALU control. Now these are the two steps that we saw yesterday. Okay, so this was the overall truth table that we got. Okay, and from there, we also saw that we can do some reduction. Okay? Uh, so again, this will not be tested. Huh? Uh, this truth table, how we how we reduce it, uh, this will not be covered. Okay, but this will be used uh, later on again when we look at the pipelining and so on. And this is important. Okay, what is important is this this page here. Okay, what are the different bits that will be generated for the different part of your processor in terms of the multiplexers? the read or write pins uh, for the register file, for the memory, okay, whether it's a BEQ instruction or whether it's R-type instructions or whatever. Okay, so this is what we saw yesterday. So we saw the R-type memory and BEQ, okay, and the different bits that will be generated, okay, depending on the instruction that we have. Okay, so in today's tutorial, the first three questions, which is in uh, to go through 
three different type of instruction and we see how it sort of plays out in the processor, okay? And once you go through this, you sort of get the whole idea how everything comes together. Okay, so the first instruction was a load word instruction, okay? So in this case, let's examine step by step, okay, what happens when we are trying to execute this load word instruction. Okay, so the first thing is the instruction encoding. Okay, that part we already covered before. So you know how to translate this instruction into the equivalent bit pattern, okay? The full 32 bits. So that part you already know. So we know that we have your opcode, we have your RS uh, and RT, and this is your immediate value. So this is your immediate value here, which is zero. Now, after I translate it to my machine encoding format, we know a few things here. Your RS is directly connected. Okay, so in this case, your RS is your register 15. So we know that for the register file, your read register 1 is this, which is your RS. How about read register 2? So this read register 2 is connected to bits 20 to 16, which is RT in this case, correct? Okay, and that is register 24. But since this is a memory access instruction, register 24 is the register that will eventually hold the data, correct? Okay, but since it is already hardwired, it will also appear at the read register 2. Uh, correct, it will still appear there even though we're not going to use it. Okay, so that is the convention that we are going to use the colors. So if I, if you see the red color, that means the data is there and we're going to use it. When you see blue color, means the data is there, but we are going to ignore it. Okay, why we ignore it? Because eventually the multiplexers and so on will decide which data is used and which is ignored. Okay, so the 24 is still presented to the pins over here but we will not be using it. In a lower instruction, your register destination here is going to be zero. So this is zero on top, one is below. So you have to remember the only R type instruction, your register destination is one, correct? Uh, because only for R type instruction, this is your RD here. Okay, for your other type instructions, your RT is the one that we want to channel over here. So in this case, my register destination must be zero. Okay, so that is why your register destination here is set to zero. And your write register, since your register destination is set to zero, it means that whatever I specify in your RT will be transferred over here. So your write register is now also 24. Okay, so your RT is actually specified here. So your RT is in two places, correct? But we are only going to make use of the right register uh, in this particular instruction. Next, the ALU. So the ALU, one of the source will always be fixed, which is your read register one. That is already hardwired, correct? Uh, the read register one is directly connected to one of your ALU input. So that one is your content inside register 15. So this bracket means the content inside register 15. And this is a instruction that will write back to your register file. So your register right here must be set to one. Okay. Next is your ALU source. So from your ALU source, we know that one of it is your operand one. The second one over here is to, to select either the register data or the immediate data, correct? The data. Yeah, so in this case, we are going to select the immediate data, correct? Because this instruction has an immediate value. So my ALU source must be set to one. So the 16 bit will get sign extended and will be channel here. Okay, so when my ALU source is set to one, this will come here. So 
So your operand 2 in this case is 0. Huh? It's 0 because your immediate value is 0. Uh, your immediate value here. So what happens next? So your ALU will then know that it's supposed to do an add operation, correct? Okay, how does it know it's supposed to do an add operation? Because that is the decision that you will make through the ALU op here. Okay, the ALU op will be generated based on the 6-bit opcode. Okay, so when the 6-bit opcode go to your control unit, it will generate the ALU op. Okay, they tell the ALU control that this is supposed to be an add operation. Okay, so in this case, the ALU result that you get will be the addition of your operand 1 and operand 2. In this case, your operand 1 is your base register, and your operand 2 is the offset that you specify as your immediate value. Okay, so what you get over here in this case is your register 15 value plus your immediate value which is 0. So that is presented as the address to the memory and at the same time it is also sent to this multiplexer here. Alright, uh, so it is sent to two different places at the same time. Next is your memory and memory write. So in this case, this is a load word instruction. So I want to do a memory read. So memory read will be 1. So if memory read is 1, then by default, you also know memory write has to be 0. Alright? You cannot read and write at the same time. Okay, so in this case, the load word. So memory read is 1. Memory write is 0. So what comes out uh, of your... write data over here is your read 2. Okay. okay, so if you see your data memory has your address and data. The address is obtained from the base address plus your immediate offset. And at the same time, there is a write data here. And the write data has, has already been wired to this read register 2, which is actually the data from RR2 that you specify, correct? And this was what? This bit here, which is your 24. So in the beginning, you already hardwire the bits 20 to 16 to read register 2 bits, correct? Now that means the data in the register 24 would come outside here. So that is the data that is presented to the memory. But it makes no impact, correct? Why? Because your memory write is set to zero. And so even though I present it with the data, it will not change anything because the memory write is zero. Only if the memory write was set to one, then this data would have been transferred into the memory. Uh, in this case, it's a memory read operation. So I'm only interested in the output side. Okay, whatever I present on the input side of the data bus is not going to have any impact. Okay, so the write data has some 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 value there, but it's not going to change anything. Next is your mem to register. So your mem to register, which is this, is to select either your ALU output or your memory output to be sent back to the register file, correct? And in this case, what we are interested in is the data that is coming out of the memory. Okay, so your memory to register must be set to 1. So that this will be channeled here to be sent back. As the data that will be written back to the register. Which register you already specify in your instruction as your write register, correct? Register 24. Okay, so the write data is the memory content of this address. 
uh, the memory content of the address specified in your register 15 plus your immediate offset. In this case, it is not a branch instruction, so your branch control signal here will be set to 0. Okay, your ALU op and ALU control you can get from the truth table. Okay, that one you don't need to memorize. Huh? If it's needed, we will give it to you. Uh, ALU op, ALU control, those truth table you do not need to memorize. Okay, you can just refer to the table. So ALU op and ALU control is already given to you. So now you can see how this particular instruction is executed, okay, by controlling the flow of data through the multiplexers and the various control signal. Okay, so this is important. Uh, so you must know how to understand this flow uh, from the start. Uh, from the moment I fetch my instruction from memory, what are all the different steps that it goes through and how the multiplexers and the control signals play a part uh, to decide how the data should flow through the processor. Okay, so this is your first instruction that we saw, the load word. Now let's look at the second instruction. Okay, so of course this is the PC value. So by default, your PC already add with 4. So this will be selected. So your PC source in this case is supposed to be 0. So your PC plus 4 will be then sent to the program counter to select the next instruction to be executed. Okay, now let's look at another instruction and do the whole process again. Huh? You look at this a few times and you get the idea, correct? Huh? Okay, now we have another instruction, BEQ, uh, register 1, register 3, and 12. Now let's look at this. So the first step is, of course, translate this to your equivalent code uh, in terms of your binary pattern and then we know which bits go to which part of your processor. So in this case, your RS is here. Okay, this is your RS. Okay, your RT is here, which is specified here as 1 and 3. And at the same time, what do you have? Your register destination, in this case, is set to X. Okay? As mentioned yesterday, when we say register any particular bit as X means, we do not care whether it's going to be 0 or 1. Okay? Why we do not care whether it's 0 or 1? Because in this case, we are not going to write any register value. Correct? Okay? And how I can ensure that I'm not going to write any register value? By making sure that register write is 0. Alright, so if register write is 0, no matter whatever comes here and whatever comes here, doesn't matter to me at all. Okay, so that is why the register destination can be set to X. So whether I say 0 or 1 doesn't matter. Okay, so the value that comes to the right register bits could be value 3 or it could be 0. In this case, why 0? Because it takes the bits 15 to 11. Okay, and 15 to 0, in this case, is a immediate value which is 12. And 12 is this pattern here. Okay, so the bits 15 to 11 in this case is 0. Okay, so it doesn't matter because anyway it's a don't care condition. So whatever I supply to those bits is not going to change anything. The ALU, in this case, the first operand is always your read register 1, okay, which is what we are going to take here, and that is your register 1, RS. Okay, register write is going to be 0 in this case, so it's not going to update any register value. Your ALU source, in this case, you are going to do a comparison between two registers, correct? So the ALU is basically going to compare between register 1 and register 3. The immediate value is not used in comparison. It is used to calculate the final branch address, correct? 
Okay, so in this case, your immediate value that is specified is not going to go to your ALU. It's going to go towards your final branch address that you're going to calculate. So this 16-bit immediate field is going to come here, but at the same time, it's also going to come here. Okay, which is going to help us generate your final branch address. Okay, but what we are interested in here for the ALU part is the ALU is supposed to compare register uh, one and uh, register three. Okay, so in this case, what should come through here? Your ALU source should be zero, correct? Uh, if your ALU source is zero, in this case, then I ensure that my read register two is the one that gets selected to go to my ALU. Okay? So register right we have seen. So the ALU is basically going to take register one and register three and basically do a subtraction for us. Okay? And after I do a subtraction, I just check whether the answer is zero or not zero. Okay? And for a instruction like BEQ, both my memory read and memory write is both set to zero. Right, because it does not involve any memory access. Now, since it is a BEQ instruction, okay, your branch must be set to one. Okay, this branch, if you recall from yesterday, for a branch instruction, there is two steps. The first step is you must decode that it is a branch based on the opcode value here. Right. Based on the opcode, you know that this is a branch instruction. But the decision to take a branch is only known when the ALU completes the comparison. Correct. So that is the two-step process. So the first step is I must generate a branch signal. And finally, I must check whether the comparison is matched or not matched. Okay. So in this case, if register 1 is equals to register 3, then we say they are equal, which means what? The is 0 is supposed to be set to 1. Okay? So if I have a 1 here, and I have a 1 here, then the PC source will be set to 1, which will select this fella, which is the PC plus 4 with the offset. Okay, so that is the decision that will be made together with the opcode and the final branch address. Okay, so I repeat, as for the branch, there is two steps. The first step is the opcode to generate the branch that is from the control unit. That's the first step. The second step is the E0 pin, okay, which is the output of the ALU, which is obtained by subtracting the two numbers. And if both of them are one, okay, so in this case, if register one and register three are both equal, then the E0 bit okay, here will be set to one. So this is an end gate. So if both are one, then the PC source will be set to one. And if PC source is set to 1, then the next address will be PC plus 4 together with the offset after you left shift, correct? And that is a branch address. Okay? So ALU op and ALU control, you know, okay, from the truth table. Okay, so what is your ALU doing to generate the E0? I am basically doing a subtraction operation here. Alright, so the subtraction operation will give me an ALU result. In this case, which is register 1 minus register 3. But it is not being used in this case, correct? And the ALU result, and the ALU is doing what operation? It's doing a subtraction operation. Okay? And for the subtraction operation, I will set a single bit, which is the E0 bit, to say whether the branch, whether the, the comparison is true or false. But at the same time, since the ALU is doing a subtraction operation, 
the result of this operation is still available on the output side. Okay, so the output ALD result is still giving me the register 1 minus register 3. Okay, but since it has nothing to do with memory, and both memory read and memory write are set to 0, I am not going to change anything at the memory side. Uh, nothing is going to happen. Okay? Sorry? Yes, because register write is 0. Okay, so the write data is set to 3. Why write data is set to 3? Because what comes out here is register 1 and register 3. And this is directly connected to your write data here. Okay, so that is why the write data has the content of your register 3. But again, it is not going to change anything uh, because your memory read and memory write is 0. And your finally, your mem to register is set to x. Why? Because it does not matter what is channeled back here because your register write is already set to 0. Okay, so mem to register, whether it's 1 or 0, again, doesn't matter uh, because I will still not write back anything to my register file. Okay, so this is the flow. So you can see that when I have different type of instruction, the decisions made along the way are different. Okay, the processor, a lot of things are wired up already, hardwired. Okay, so there is always a lot of data flowing to many parts of the processor at the same time. Whether this data is relevant, whether it makes sense, will be decided by the control unit. Okay, so the control unit is helping us to make decisions, okay, on whether this data is currently relevant for this instruction or is it going to be ignored for this instruction. Okay, for your right data, okay, so you can see that the right data here is 1 minus 3, okay, which is here. Or could be some random value. Okay? Why is it could be some random value? Okay? If one will it be one minus three? Okay, if the mem to register happen to be zero, correct? Because mem to register currently we say is x. Okay? So since it's x, it could have been zero, it could have been one. If my mem to register is 0, then the ALU result, which is your 1 minus 3, okay, which is your 1 minus 3, would have come here, and that would have sent back towards your write data. But if my mem to register was 1, then it would have selected the data from memory, correct? Okay? You would have selected data from memory. So what is the data coming out from here? So we do not know, correct? Because it would have been the data from whatever that was there earlier on. Okay, so it could have been any random value. Okay, but again, all this does not matter because eventually your register write is zero. So if my register write is zero, no matter what I specify as write address, what I specify as write data is still not going to change anything. Okay. So the next PC value in this case would have been either the PC plus 4 or the branch address, which is PC plus 4 plus the immediate value multiplied by 4. Okay, so one more instruction. Okay, one more instruction to, to see how the whole thing works out. So we saw two different type of instructions. One was the add immediate uh, uh, instruction, the other is a branch instruction, and now it's a pure R-type instruction. Okay, so let's see how a pure R-type instruction like this would have executed through the processor. Okay, so again, the first step is translate this to your opcode, and after that, what do you do? You specify your RS and RT. So this is your RS, and this is your RT here. Okay. 
And since this is a R type instruction, we would have set the register destination to 1. Okay, so this would have been a 1, which means that your bits 15 to 11 are the ones that will be selected to be the right register. Okay, so that would mean that register 25 would be your RD here. So your ALU, the first operand is your read register 1, which is your RS. Okay. Subsequently, we also know your R type instruction will always have a update to a register. So your register write will be set to a 1 right, uh, for R type instruction. Next is your ALU source. So for your ALU source, one of the operands is your RS. And your second operand in this case is your register again. So what we want is the register data to be channel here. So your ALU source must be zero. And that will select the register data as your second ALU operand. And so your register RS, the content inside your register 20 and the content inside register 5. So this will be the two operands for your ALU block. In this case, you are doing a subtraction operation. So what comes out here is your register 20 minus register 5. Correct? And that is actual data, but since it's also connected to the address of your memory block, it will also go to the address bus. Okay, but you are not doing any memory access, so it's not going to actually change anything. So your memory write and memory read both will be set to zero. Okay, so even though I supply it at, with the address, since there is no memory write or memory read uh, activated, nothing else is going to happen there. Okay, similarly, the write data is the data coming out from your read register two. Okay, and this is your RT in this case, which is your register 5. Okay. In this R type instruction, after the ALU has completed the operation, it is the ALU result that we want to write back. Okay, so what we want is the ALU result, which is this, to be sent back to the to the register file. So in this case, your mem to register must be 0. Okay, so the mem to register will be set to 0, so the ALU output is selected to be sent back to your register file. And the write data in this case is the result of your ALU operation. So this is actually your <coughs> ALU result here. Uh, the data that came out after the ALU operation. Okay, and through the mem to register multiplexer, you channel it back to your write data pin. And since your register write is already set to one, your register will be updated. Which register? Whichever register you specify in your write register in your instruction. This is not a branch instruction, so your branch will be zero. Your ALU op and ALU control you get from the truth table. Uh, for a BN for a BNE instruction, well, how will how will the how will the in zero output change? If constant branch one must branch branch must still be one, then the operation perform for BNE mm. not equal. Mm. It's because yeah, BNE is not shown here. This is only BEQ because we are only looking at a subset of instruction. Okay, so let's look at the timing uh, relation for the questions. Okay, so question one, okay, after I release this slide, go through again uh, the step-by-step -step process to understand uh, the flow again, uh, how the data flows through, how the control lines are changed and so on. Okay, now let's look at your instruction uh, and timing, okay? So in your tutorial question,
Okay, in your tutorial question, you are given some timing, correct? That means different blocks, okay, how much time it takes to compute, okay, for the different sections of your processor. And you're asked to estimate how much is the total execution time for these three different instructions, uh, the subtract, load word, and the EQ. Okay, so let's uh, look at that. Okay, so for the subtract instruction, what do you have? So the first step, instruction memory will always be there. Okay, that means this is the first step to fetch the instruction from your memory and bring it to your register. So that one is given as 400 picoseconds. Subsequently, we activate the register file. Okay, all our instructions, there will definitely be at least one register involved. Okay, so you definitely need to activate the register file to get some data out. Could be RS alone or could be RS and RT. And at the same time, your control block is also activated. Correct? Because two things have happened concurrently. One is your register file and the other is your control block. Okay, both of them are triggered at the same time. But you can see that the control block timing is only 100 picosecond, correct? Okay, compared to your register file. So it means what? That means your control block's output will always be generated before the register can output the data. Okay, so the control block will never play a critical role in the final timing here uh, because it's always faster than the register file. So we don't need to factor that as a separate block in the calculation. After that, what do I need to do? I need to go through this multiplexer over here. Right? And this multiplexer can only give me the correct data after the register file has given me the data inside the register. Correct? Okay, so it is so you think of it as what are the sequence of operation that must take place. Okay, so this ALU, uh, ALU source multiplexer can only be correct or give me the correct output after the register file is complete. Whereas register file and control are both concurrent. There is no dependency, correct? Uh, there is no dependency, so they are both concurrent. So the one that is the slowest is the one we need to consider. Okay? For ALU source, there is a dependency on the register file. So only after the register file is complete, okay, this 200 picosecond complete, then the ALU source multiplexer can be calculated at a time taken. Okay, after that is the actual ALU timing. Okay, so in this case, it's 120 picosecond. Okay, this timing again will change because different instruction will have different timing, okay, depending on how the hardware is designed. Okay, so generally add or subtract have a certain timing. Logical operations will generally be faster. Okay, multiply, divide will be a lot slower. Okay, after I get the ALU output, I need to take the data and pass it through this other multiplexer to make the decision, correct? To channel this data back to my register file. So I need to factor in that timing and finally the time taken to write the data back to the register file. Okay, so these are all the different subsections of my processor that will contribute to the total time that it takes for my instruction to complete. Okay, so in this instruction, there is no memory involved in terms of the data. So this data memory is not involved, so I don't need to factor in how much time that is going to play a part. The only memory is the original instruction memory, not the data memory. Okay, so when I add everything, I get this number, 980 picosecond. That means in a theoretical analysis, you will say that this instruction will take 980 picoseconds to complete. Okay, how about a load word instruction? A load word instruction, the first two steps will always be the same because you always need to fetch from instruction memory. You will always have one of the register involved, correct? So the first two steps is the same. And again, the control block is parallel with this. So it is not going to add to the timing. It's a parallel operation. So we take the register file as the critical part. Subsequently, we go to the ALU. 
Okay, we go to the ALU. Okay, why is the MUX ALU source in this case not included? Because the ALU source, this MUX is still needed, correct? Because this MUX must be set, this ALU source must be set to 1 so that this data goes through here. Okay, but I do not need to factor that as a timing. In the earlier case, I have to factor it. Alright, in this case, I don't need to factor. Okay, why? Because the data I'm interested in, in this case, already come from my instruction here. Okay? That means the moment the instruction memory is fetched, I just need to go through a sign extend block and come out here. Correct? And a sign extend block is going to be much, much more faster than the register access. Okay, so this again is going to be, the timing is going to be much, much lesser compared to your register file access, which means that this data, the timing that the data is available here is again much earlier compared to the output of your register file. Okay, so this multiplexer will complete the operation and stand by the data at the ALU site much earlier than the read data one. Okay, so you have to remember your control is complete in 100 picosecond, correct? That means in 100 picosecond, this ALU source already stand by already. And your assign extend is a very simple hardware operation, which means that the data that is supposed to come here is already available much more in advance than the read data one uh, from the register file. So that is why this multiplexer can be ignored in this calculation. So once I have the one source from the register file and the other sign extend immediate value, the second is the ALU, the third step is the ALU, and after the ALU is complete, in this case, I need to present it to my memory. So I need to factor in the time that it takes for my memory access. And once the data come out, okay, I need to activate this multiplexer. Okay, that's the memory to register. And finally, I need to write back to my register file. Okay, so when I add everything together, I get this. Okay, so you can see that your memory instructions will always be longer uh, because you need to factor in additional time for the data memory access. Whereas your R time instructions once you have your data from the ALU, you can immediately write back to the register. Okay, the last one is your BEQ instruction. For your BEQ instruction, what are you doing? So you can see three things happening in parallel. When your instruction is fetched from the memory, okay, you are sending it to your register file you are sending it to your control, and at the same time, you can also do the sign extension and stand by your potential jump a branch address, correct? Uh, all these hardware blocks will operate very fast, uh, much faster than your register file. Okay, so basically once your register file is complete, I take the two data, okay, and then I still need to do a multiplexer. Again, this time, why I need to include the multiplexer again? Because the operand that I'm interested in is coming from the register. Correct? So I need to wait for the register file to complete and give me the two data, RD1 and RD2. In the previous example, I only want RD1. Correct? Uh, the RD2 was not needed. I, I straight away take from sign extent, which is available independent of register file. In this case, the RD2 is dependent on register file time. Okay, so the 200 picosecond must complete first before the multiplexer can be used to give me the correct value. Okay, so you must think of what are sequential and what are parallel. Correct? And if parallel, which, which of the parallel cases will be the worst case? Uh, which is the longest? Okay, so once I get the two data, then I have the ALU timing. Okay, and once I get the ALU timing, then I know that the ALU result will be generated together with the E0 pin. 
Okay, and this branch is already calculated from the control after the 100 picoseconds already, correct? Okay, so that means this is already standby here after the initial 100 picosecond. And once the ALU complete, then I can immediately do the end operation and then trigger the multiplexer here to select the correct PC value here. Okay, so in this instruction, once the ALU gives me the if zero result, I can immediately know the output of my PC. Uh, whether it's supposed to go to PC plus four or it's supposed to go to the new branch address. Okay, the green part, as you can see, and the purple part do not play a critical role here. Why? Because those hardware blocks are going to execute much, much more faster than the main blocks like your register in ALU. Okay, so the timing of this green part and the purple part here are much lesser. Uh, so that's why they are not factored in for the timing. Okay, so this is what you get for your branch instruction when you add up everything together. Okay, so the last question, question three, uh, I will just give you uh, some rough idea first on, on how to solve it. Okay, so in this question, basically what you have is they have told you that they have uh, made a mistake, correct, in the... Uh, connection to the multiplexer here. So rightfully, your register destination on top is zero, below is one. But now they say that on top is one, below is zero. Okay? And they asked you what are the possible situations here that will give you the correct answer or wrong answer. Okay? Uh, even if though, even though this multiplexer is wired wrongly. Okay? So the first one is your add instruction. Okay, so for add instruction, this is what? This is, for example, your RS, and this is your RT, and this is supposed to be your RD, correct? Okay? So when will it be correct? So in this case, what have I swapped? Your RS is still here, correct? And your re for R type instruction, your registered destination is supposed to be what? For your R type instruction, okay, let's say I do a R type instruction. Okay, register destination is supposed to be one, correct? Okay. So now in this case, in this wrong configuration, your register destination is still one, correct? Okay. So what will happen? This will also get copied over here, correct? Okay, that means your RS, your RT, and your RT here again, correct? Because of this wrong polarity in your multiplexer, your RT also gets copied over as your right register, correct? And because your register destination will be set to one for R type instruction. So when will it be correct if my RT and RD in this case both happen to be the same? Okay, so for example, if I say add, uh, let's say register, uh, let's say x, y, and x again. Okay, so in this case, you have your rs, correct, rt, and rd, correct? Okay, so in this case, what do you see? Okay, when your register destination is one, okay, your RS and RT, sorry, okay, so your RT and RD are both the same, correct? Okay, so in this case, your RT and your RD are both the same. So even though I specify as uh, Y, X, and X, Okay, the x that is here and x that is here is the same. So in this case, this will still give me the correct answer. Okay, so the case where your RT and RD are both the same, then your processor will still give me the correct answer. 
Okay, if the RT and RD is not the same, then you get the wrong answer. Okay. In your load word type instructions, okay, so for example, okay, if I say uh, load word to some register, okay, so I, I'm supposed to specify an immediate value, correct? Okay, together with some register here. Now, if I say for load word, okay, this 15 onwards is actually my immediate value, correct? Okay, so rightfully 15 onwards is supposed to be my immediate value. Okay, but my register destination is supposed to be what? It's supposed to be zero, correct? For your load word, your register destination is supposed to be zero, correct? Now for your load word instruction, okay, load word instruction, your register destination is supposed to be zero. That means what will happen? Okay? So in a wrong type situation here, it is this that will get channel through, correct? Okay, that means your right register will actually be what? The bits 15 to 11 will actually be your right register. Okay, so if it happens to be a situation where the upper 5 bits of your immediate value also match your right register, then it is correct. Okay, when I release the solution, you can look through some of the example. Huh? So, but that is the idea. Basically, because of this mistake, what happened? The actual RT, which is this bit, does not get mapped over. Alright? What gets mapped over is the bits 15 to 11. But this 15 to 11 actually is not a register. It's part of your immediate value. Alright? Okay? So, the mistake is what? That means, part of the immediate value, which is 15 to 11, will then be interpreted wrongly as your right register. So if this 15 to 11 happen to be the same as any of the right register value that you want to write to, uh, then it is considered a correct match. Okay? Okay, and the last part here, which is your BEQ instruction. Okay, for your BEQ instruction. For BEQ, Basically, this mistake is not going to do anything, correct? Okay, why is it not going to do anything? Because for BEQ, you're only interested in read register 1 and read register 2. So whatever gets mapped inside here is not going to change anything. Okay, for BEQ, you're only interested in read register 1, read register 2, uh, because you want to compare these two values. Okay, so it is not going to change your final outcome in any way. Okay, so that is the general idea. Okay, when we release the solutions, you can have a look. Okay, so uh, that sort of wraps up the tutorial. Okay, so I sent an announcement about the midterm, so I'll go through. If any doubts still remain, please let me know. Okay, later I will send another announcement for those students who have indicated they cannot come for the actual timing and they'll come for the later timing at 12 noon. Okay, so that is to confirm. Okay, if no questions, thank you. Good luck for your revision.
pastor. No, no, he's not dumb, but his, his info is available from the instruction. Yeah. yeah. So I don't need, I have no dependency on this. But, uh, no, uh, I see, I mean, I thought I mean, the boom, then they will determine whether to use any of No, no, it, it doesn't check anything. It's just uh. based on the control signal. Uh. If the control signal is 1 or 0, you decide which one will go. Or like if like for example if like one they will take immediate then zero they will take the oh so if zero then they need to wait for red if one they straight away just take the hum dung code. Correct, correct. Okay. Like you only filter which way to go. Yeah. <coughs> but if the area source is on standby, uh from the beginning, why is this magic lesson on standby? Because the control signal is uh, the same signal. Uh, but it needs to wait for each other. But as in if you say it's on standby, like it's if it works it's okay. Mm. Then should the Because you need to wait for this output to trigger this to trigger this. Yeah, but why is that exactly because of the magic? Oh, you're asking why shouldn't you just go through, right? Yeah. No, because in this case, okay, so it depends on, okay, in this case, for example, okay, I, I, it is already there, alright, but the data that I'm interested in is this, mm -hmm. which is only available after ALU. Yeah, so the moment ALU, uh, the moment ALU has a result, shouldn't it be straight away triggered here? Should this, like, no, because it needs time to complete the operation. But why does this one not take time to complete? Because this, no, it takes time, but this time is uh -huh. much shorter than this time. Completed the operation. Is this correct? You already complete the operation before oh, you so Yeah, because you need this one ma, just now. Oh, so essentially, uh, for, the sec for the second part just now, uh, the multiplexer here yeah, actually, actually has a 30 picosecond. No, it's still has. actually part of this. But because you need to wait for this one ma. It's uh, part of this branch. It's already complete before. The register files are complete. Mm -hmm. There was a delay here of uh, 30 picoseconds, but here forced me to wait for this one. That's why it's still part of So it's actually uh, it's there. parallel. It's yeah. there, but it's not. It's not complete. Oh, okay, okay. This multiplexer also takes 30 picoseconds. Understand? So all the hardware block takes takes time to complete. It's just that in this case, for example, this 30 picoseconds, plus whatever time here, is faster than this time. <laughs> so it already complete and gives you the data here. Before this one can finish. So what is that? Mm -hmm. Slower operations running from time. Yeah. So in this case, you, you, you still need 30 seconds, yeah, but the 30 seconds can only be done after this data. <laughs> the microphone is. Uh, <laughs> no parallelism. Yeah. 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 For, for here, right? Uh, the, because here also got one 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah. But because that time you say this one doesn't matter, it can run on the second half of the clock. <laughs> because drive is already towards the end, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. So, yeah. like, let's say you are at the ALU stage, maybe this one can go through half. Because I knew this whole thing, the right is always done at the end of the day. And by the time that the second comes back, it's all going to be there. Because this one is calculated at the second level. 